Ja, vielen Dank für die Einladung äh, in Dänemark. Wir, wir lernen Deutsch in Schule, aber ich will in Englisch sprechen today, uh, because I'm afraid there will be too many mistakes for you. But I actually love uh, speaking German when I have the possibility. My name is Lena and I'm from Denmark and I'm a professor in psychology and a researcher uh, on vocational education and training uh, and creativity. Uh, so um, I guess my research profile combines the theme of today. And from my perspective, uh, vocational education and training really goes hand in hand. And I'm going to tell you why. And I have 13 minutes to do so. Uh, as you might know, um, many of my colleagues around the world agree that creativity is no longer a luxury for the few. Uh, all of us have to be creative um, and we need the creativity of all employees if we are going to uh, develop um, new products uh, and be innovative. And that point cannot be underestimated from my point of view because it really puts vet education uh, in the center uh, for the ambition uh, of innovation which Europe needs. Um, One of my uh, mentors uh, is here, she is uh, Vera John Steiner, she's an American uh, psychologist and philosopher. And in 1997, uh, she wrote a book called Notebook of the Mind. And if those of you who read English are interested, you should really read the book. Uh, it's lovely, full of lovely stories of creative people. And concluding uh, all her interviews, she states that learning that leads to creativity requires actual work. Um, there is uh, no quick fix when it comes to creativity. Some of us uh, are taught, uh, and I may be born with this romantic idea of creativity, that, that you just have to wait and then it will come to you if you wait long enough. Um, <laughs> but as you know, that's not the case. It actually requires work. And, and she also states very beautifully that creativity that leads, uh, it builds on the ability to see clearer and to rediscover what we know but seem to have forgotten. And maybe in Europe there are something that we have might forgotten. Um, and from my perspective, I really think that we have forgotten the great potential of vet education. Innovation comes from somewhere. It doesn't just drop from heaven, or at least I haven't found that yet. Um, it requires work and skilled people out in our uh, companies and organizations, they are often the one getting the best ideas and they are often the ones getting the ideas first. And then the art work is transporting these ideas up to managers and engineers uh, who can maybe create something on the basis of that. Um. In one of my recent book, um, books, I, I wrote this. I said, creativity is a result of mastery and, and craft. Um, and if you think that creativity is all about uh, yellow uh, post-it notes and brainstorms and divergent thinking out of the box thinking, um, then you are on the wrong track because When we study creativity and creative people, creative organizations, innovative organizations, we can see that they often work, you know, for many years to achieve uh, something new. I'm studying innovation currently at a Danish company and the people there, they tell me that innovation takes five or six years you know, from having the first glimpse of the idea and then having a product that you could actually put on the market, it does require a lot of work. And, and just getting the idea is a very tiny part of it. So I think what we have to really understand is that 
actual creativity and innovation, it requires people who uh, have a lot of foundational skills, specialized skills, but they, of course they also have to use these in, in new ways and they have to collaborate with people that are maybe different from themselves. But basically, creativity is about mastery. It is a craft. You can actually learn to be more creative if you practice. And uh, it's often a matter of recycling. And, and recycling is also you know, a big trend out there. But when we look at people creating something new, and when we ask them what they do, they often tell us that they haven't invented anything on themselves, uh, that everything has been said before, or everything has been built before. But what they are doing is that they are rebuilding, they are recreating, they are uh, telling a different story, they are putting things together in new ways. And those who know something about this, uh, they are able to combine things in new ways. So, Creativity is business as usual, and if you begin tomorrow, uh, it will work. Uh, it does take a few years to master the practice, but you can get there. I did my PhD um, studying a lot of uh, electromechanical uh, apprentices in a big company in Denmark. And one of the apprentices that I met was uh, Søren. Um, and he taught me how to be creative. Uh, he said, and this is a quote from my thesis, he said, there are probably some who fool around more than others. I had a trouble finding the right English word. Uh, we could also call it moonlighting or experimenting or working in your spare time. Um, but that was what he did a lot. Out here at the company, fooling around is a good thing. It's not seen as bad, because if you don't have something to do in the department at some point, well, it's good to go ahead and work on something. Um, to have a project that you can get started on. You learn from it. You learn a lot from, from it in any case, because it's really, if you have something that you have really decided on, then you really want to get involved in it, and that's something you learn from. Basically, the, the most innovative uh, and creative apprentices, they spend all their time, you know, trying to develop new things, combining things, and they stayed at the company after work to, to keep working. And some of them had a, a cell uh, at home and they were working there with their parents, uh, their father, for example. So I think that's what we really need. We really need to understand that creativity requires, you know, a lot of time and you have to involve yourself in it um, and we need those great people uh, in vocational education. In Denmark, as I can hear is the case also here, uh, most young people today go to high school so we're really suffering um, from this and, and we need people like, like CERN again in vocational education. From a research-based perspective, we actually know something about how to create spaces that uh, enable creative learning. And this is uh, you know, a way of summing it up. Um, you need to, uh, in the classroom, outside the classroom, at the school, at the workplace, in the company, you have to have a flexible use of space and time. Uh, and that was actually what CERN did. He's, he had a very flexible use of, of space and time. There has to be materials available. Uh, you have to work outside the classroom. Playful and game-based approaches can be used. A respectful relationship between teachers and learners. Opportunities for collaborations of all kinds. Um, and an awareness of learners' needs. And we can see these dimensions, you know, coming into education to a higher extent, but still there's a way to go to really create these spaces for, for young people, both at school but also at the company. My last point will be uh, a few examples from a current study that I'm doing at Grundfos. It's a big Danish industrial company, and I'm studying uh, the, the creative processes involved in uh, innovation. And what we learn from this current study is that 
innovative organizations, they really need all their employees. And they, we need craft people to be part of the table here, where decisions are made about how to progress. Um, in Denmark, we are suffering a bit from increasing divides between uh, academics and craft people. Uh, they, don't, they are not brought up in the same schools anymore. They don't live in the same neighborhoods necessarily. So they don't understand each other as they did just 20 years ago. So the importance of creating these collaborative spaces at the workplace cannot be underestimated. Um, and things goes very, go very fast today. Uh, Fleming here, he's a concept manager at the Grundfos. He says that, you know, we have to work really fast to compete with, for example, Asian uh, industrial companies. And we have to act much smarter than we have done before. We have to learn quicker. Um, and he says that regarding creativity, he says we have to be better at selecting the best ideas. Many people think that creativity is just, you know, getting ideas, but actually uh, choosing the right ideas is really the craft to be learned, and it has to go faster. You cannot just wait uh, to, to get at the right decision. Uh, you have to move out to customers to ask them uh, and to present them, you know, initial ideas, sketches, uh, and this is really something that they are trying to, to learn together out there currently. Uh, another Danish big industrial company, in Denmark at least, is, um, is Stanfors um, in the southern part of, of Jutland. And uh, their owner, uh, Jan Mas Clausen, he said uh, publicly uh, a few years ago, he's, he said that, you know, he, he knows that if Denmark is or Europe is going to survive, we have to create new companies and, and the ideas have to come from somewhere. And he says that what they do is that they allow their employees to, to use materials and technologies uh, in the workshops to work on, on new ideas. And, and some of you are might familiar with Google's 20% rule that employees at Google can spend 20% of their time uh, working on their own designs and projects. And that's actually what CERN did, uh, the apprentice I met uh, a few years ago. Um, and of course, at Google, they work 80 hours a, a week, so, so it's quite easy <laughs> for them to to have this flexible use of, of time. But, but the basic point here is that ideas come from somewhere and we have to spend time experimenting and, and we have to risk sometimes that you know, these 20% won't lead to a new product currently or at the moment, but maybe uh, next year or next year again. My last point here is that uh, we are in Europe now and we're in Switzerland and by the way we often mention you in, in Denmark because we really think that you know something about dual education as you do in Germany as well. Um, but we are all I think faced with you know an Americanization of our society um, for good and bad. Um, and uh, I have uh, very good American colleagues, and, and one of them is, is Ron Becchetto. He's a professor in educational psychology, as I am myself. And uh, he said to me, um, it was half a year ago, he said, well, Lena, you are becoming more and more infused with these American ideas. And one of them is that there is a thing like, you know, instant creativity that you can get it uh, just as you, you know, you can download an app and then you will get it or you can go to a quick fix course and people will tell you how to think divergently. Um, but, but the truth is, he said, and he's an American, so he's accusing himself and, and their ideas. He said, that's not the case. Um, education is necessary for creativity. You have to learn something to be able to create something new. You have to know where you stand if you want to go in another direction. You have to know where you come from. 
you have to consider values, what is good for our society, what are we to be innovative with and, and why. So there is no instant creativity. We need education and we need lifelong learning, as has already been uh, uh, emphasized. And we need craft because craft is, you know, the foundation of creativity. Um, and um, yes, that's it. <laughs>